Listener to Freedom FM Issues program raises Japanese whaling scandal involving St. Kitts Nevis. Bast here, St. Kitts, July 7, 2019, former Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the RT Han Dr. Denzel L. Douglas said former cabinet ministers had expressed concern over allegations of greed and corruption during Dr. Timothy Harris's 17-year tenure in the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party cabinet from 1995 to 2013. Responding to a question during the recent edition of Issues on Freedom 106.5 FM, the former Prime Minister mentioned numerous incidents when Dr. Harris held several portfolios during his four-term administration. Harris was dismissed from the cabinet in January 2013. Cabinet ministers complained of his greed and selfishness. Dwyer Astafan, Sam Conder, Rupert Herbert, all complained bitterly, the former prime minister told listeners. A listener to the program raised the issue of Dr. Harris being named in the sting operation reported by Britain's Sunday Times newspaper on June 13, 2010 on the secret deals which patched together Japan's alliance of African, Asian, Pacific, and Caribbean states on the whaling issue. Dr. Harris was at the time of the Sunday Times article, June 10, 2010, the senior minister and minister of agriculture and marine resources. Dr. Harris is presently the prime minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. According to the Sunday Times in the story headlined, flights, girls, and cash by Japanese whaling boats, the paper approached the key ministers and fisheries officials from those countries in an undercover investigation. Two reporters posed as lobbyists who had been hired by Dr. Hans Kruber, a fictional Swiss billionaire philanthropist who had created the European Development Fund for Fisheries. Following is a part of the Sunday Times report and the full interview with Dr. Harris. Our proposal was designed to mirror the alleged tactics of the Japanese. Government officials were told we were putting together a coalition of countries who would vote against whaling. They were each offered £25 million in aid over 10 years from Kruber's fund and all they had to do was vote against the whaling quotas at the Morocco meeting. Six countries indicated they were willing to consider our offer and went away to discuss it with senior officials and ministers. They were St. Kitts and Nevis, the Marshall Islands, Kiribati, Grenada, Ivory Coast and Guinea. Even more revealing were officials' revelations about their relations with Japan. Another block of pro-whaling countries are the East Caribbean islands of St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Antigua, Barbuda and the Grenadines. St. Kitts and Nevis, one of the world's smallest countries, has a population of 50,000. The former British colony depends heavily on aid as its sugar industry has collapsed. Timothy Harris, the country's marine resources minister who is also its IWC commissioner, was only too keen to discuss the undercover reporter's proposal. The first meeting took place in the cramped government offices in Bastyr, the island's capital. With a senior civil servant taking notes, Harris explained that Japan provided finance for a number of fish-related infrastructure projects and was paying for a new fish market in Nevis. He promised to raise the reporter's offer to buy St. Kitts's vote with the cabinet but added there might be concern that Japan could pull the plug on its aid if St. Kitts switched sides. Harris, right now we are working on a project for a new complex, so if you were to do something, we'd want to ensure that is not jeopardized. Reporter, not jeopardized. What? Harris, it's being funded by Japan. Shortly after the meeting, Harris rang the reporters and invited them to lunch. Over conk balls in a restaurant overlooking the beach, he was far more candid. In front of his civil servant earlier he had taken the customary Japanese line that whales were eating significant proportions of St. Kitts's fish stocks. Now he admitted this was unlikely, I'm not sure that we have whales, or at least many. This St. Kitts interest in the whaling issue was minimal but it participated in the IWC because it could have direct benefits and also out of solidarity for St. Vincent which still allows a small amount of indigenous whaling. Harris said he had been selected to speak on behalf of his fellow East Caribbeans at a crucial meeting in Grenada last month with Japan's IWC commissioner and ambassador. 
He said the islands were angry because they were suffering reputational damage by supporting Japan's pro-whaling stance. Harris was asked to argue that the Japanese should come up with a proposal for compensation ahead of the Morocco vote. The islands wanted Japan to fund wider development projects rather than just fisheries. Reporter, and were they the islands threatening not to support Japan in the IWC vote? Harris, no, they didn't put it as that, because I don't think it might have been diplomatic to say. But if you say to a country or some partner this is matter that is important to me, and they consistently refuse to help you, then they are leaving you with no choice. Harris had promised to debate the reporter's proposal in cabinet and was planning to stop off in London this week to discuss the offer further. The report in the British newspaper prompted a call by then opposition People's Action Movement, PAM, for a full explanation on the allegation that the then government official accepting bribes for cash and prostitutes. I am concerned about the negative press our country is receiving over this matter of our government officials accepting bribes for our country's vote at the International Whaling Commission, said MP Eugene Hamilton. What is more concerning to me, my party and frankly the entire nation is what exactly did our ministers negotiate for and exactly what did they receive on behalf of the country or on their own behalf for that matter, in return for their vote. It is well known that our fisheries complex was built as a result of Japanese aid. However the undercover operation by the Sunday Times revealed that government officials not only received aid but also envelopes of hard cash, the immoral use of prostitutes, all expense paid hotel stays and free plane rides and who knows what else. So I am of the view that our country is owed an explanation about exactly what our country received and what our government officials received in return for our country's support of Japanese whaling. Japanese whaling is a highly controversial issue and incidents of bribery involving our minister of government and officials puts our country in a very negative light internationally, Hamilton said in the PAM news release dated June 15, 2010. Hamilton is now a Minister of Health in the Team Unity Cabinet of Prime Minister Dr. The Han Timothy Harris. On June 20, the PAM Secretariat also issued the following statement quoting, Political Leader, Han Sean Richards. It is well known that our fisheries complexes were built as a result of Japanese aid. However the undercover operation by the Sunday Times revealed that government officials not only received aid but also envelopes of hard cash, the immoral use of prostitutes, all expense paid hotel stays and free plane rides and who knows what else. I am of the view that our country is owed an explanation about exactly what our country received and what our government officials received in return for our country's support of Japanese whaling. Japanese whaling is a highly controversial issue and incidents of bribery involving our government and officials puts our country in a very negative light internationally, Richards continued. Richards is now Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education in the Team Unity Cabinet of Prime Minister Harris. In response to the Sunday Times article, Dr. Harris in a statement said, I must reiterate that this allegation that St. Kitts and Nevis is a country open to sell its vote at the IWC to Japan or any other bidder for that matter is unfounded, dubious, and nefarious, and can only be the product of persons who are deeply obsessed with denigrating the good name of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, its Minister of Marine Resources and for that matter all citizens and well-wishers of our country. Hence, I have sought legal advice with a view to confront, repudiate, and expose the perpetrators of this most malicious, sinister and vile orchestration of lies, innuendos, and insinuations against our beloved country and its officials. I really would have expected better, much better from a publication such as the Sunday Times. No legal action was ever known to be taken by Dr. Harris. Photo 1, RT Han Dr. Denzel L. Douglas. Photo 2, Dr. The Han Timothy Harris. Photo 3, Han Eugene Hamilton. Photo 4, Han Sean Richards.